Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com. It has been a few years since we have brought our best Carnival Cruise Line tips and tricks to you. And today we are revisiting our best Carnival Cruise Line pieces of advice for you because is it not true that cruising has just changed so much over the last two years? The Carnival fleet has changed, the company has changed, and just the world of cruising alone have completely changed. Now, we also have a podcast and a website article on this topic, so if you want to go ahead and listen to that or check out our, our uh, website, we're going to link to those in the comments below so that you can check out different kind of ways of absorbing this information, but let's go ahead and get started with our top 20 list of Carnival Cruise Line tips and money-saving tricks. Our first tip for you is to plan the right Carnival Cruise for you. Now, Carnival Cruisers who are in the know will tell you that not every Carnival Cruise is the same, right? There's certainly a huge difference when you're planning between a two to four night weekend cruise and a seven or eight night Caribbean or Mexican Riviera cruise. The guests are going to be different. The feel is gonna be different. You're going to have on your shorter cruises, you're gonna have a little bit more of a party vibe. Whereas on your longer term cruises, you're gonna have a lot of fun, but you're gonna have a little bit more relaxation. So you really wanna think about planning your Carnival Cruise correctly. And a good way to do that is to work with a travel agent because travel agents can help to get to know your travel style and help you pick the Carnival Cruise that is right for you. Now, while we're talking about kind of preparing for the cruise, there's a few more things we want to talk about in terms of preparation. One of those things is that once you've checked in for your cruise online and you're getting closer to your cruise date and it's time to get all of your boarding documents ready, we actually recommend that you print off all of your boarding documents. So you're going to want to print off your boarding passes, you're going to want to print off your luggage tags, you're going to want to print off your proof of vaccination and COVID tests. And even though a lot of these things are electronic these days and you can use downloads or scannable apps, I just have to tell you that in our experience cruising with Carnival and really just traveling in general this year, having printed documents in a nice little folder, whatever kind of folder works for you, is just so much easier. Now we do have a video about how to create your own cruise binder. If you wanna go with something a little more fancy, it's probably not totally necessary, but if you'd like to do something like that, you certainly can. Another uh, preparatory tip for you is to make sure that you download the Carnival Hub app. Now I know that sometimes when we go on a cruise, we all just really like to unplug, right? And maybe put our mobile phones away in the safe and not use them for the duration of the cruise. But these days, we do recommend that at least one person in your cruising party downloads the Carnival Hub app just so that you can do a number of different things while you're on board. You can check out dining times, you can find out about entertainment, you can make dining and shore excursion reservations, you can order room service, you can check your account summary. There's just so many different things that you can can do on the Hub app. So we recommend that you do that in advance. Another tip we have for you, and this is kind of an advanced tip. This is for someone who cruises with Carnival frequently or the Carnival Corporation frequently, and that is that you might want to consider buying stock in Carnival Corporation and receiving an onboard credit for when you cruise with Carnival. That can be done. You need a certain number of shares. Go to Carnival's website, learn more about that, but be sure to get that onboard credit because you will be so glad that you did. Another thing that we'd like to encourage you to do is not rely on the ship's Wi-Fi. So what do we mean by that? Well, we certainly don't mean that you shouldn't buy the ship's Wi-Fi package. In fact, we think you probably should invest in the highest level of the ship's Wi-Fi. But what we are recommending is that in addition to doing that, that you also contact your cell phone carrier because when you are in certain places, like for example, today we are in Mexico in Puerto Vallarta. We called our cell phone provider, which happens to be AT&T, and they had something called International Day Pass where we can just turn our phone on, take it out of airplane mode, and we get normal cell service here, which is a really nice break from the ship's Wi-Fi. Let's be honest. All of the cruise lines out there claim to have amazing Wi-Fi, but do they really have perfect Wi-Fi that's gonna get you through the whole cruise? Not always. It can be kind of hit and miss. All right, a few more preparatory tips, and then we're gonna go ahead and explore the ship a little bit more and come back to you, break up the scenery a little bit. 
preparatory tip that we have for you is that if you are going to buy the drinks packages, there are several available to you, be sure to buy those before the cruise, you will save money. And don't forget that if you buy the drinks package that the gratuities are already included. Now you can certainly tip extra, but you don't have to. Another tip for you, we suggest that you pre-purchase some bottled water to have in your cabin for you. It's very inexpensive and it's really nice just to have that water waiting for you. Let's go explore the ship a little bit more and we'll bring you some more tips and money saving tricks. We're at the Cloud Nine Spa on Carnival Panorama to bring you more tips and money saving tricks. And oh my goodness, my blood pressure just melts melts down when I come here. It's so, so peaceful and so tranquil. That leads us to our next tip, which is to take advantage of spa deals when you're cruising with Carnival. Now, usually these spa deals come in the form of court day specials. So when naturally people go ashore and the spa is just a little bit more quiet, they offer some really, really good deals. And usually they're on like combination treatments. So usually, whereas you might normally pay $179 for a facial, you might be able to get a short facial and massage combo for like $99. Now, don't quote me on those prices because I'm just giving you kind of examples and prices vary from ship to ship and they change over time. But it's just a, a good thing to know that you really, on that first day, when they give you all the prices, know that those are, those are in fact valid, but that they're going to go down throughout the course of the cruise if you're flexible about when you get your spa treatment. Speaking of relaxation, oh, there's a place on Carnival that we absolutely love for adults, and that is the adults-only serenity area with clamshell loungers and usually hot tubs, and just tranquil seating. On some ships, there's even a bar. Oh, it's just a wonderful place to go and hang out in a quiet, relaxing environment because Carnival is known as the fun ship, right? So sometimes it can be kind of lively around the ship, and when you need a place to go chill, that is your spot. But maybe you're looking for something a little bit more fun on Carnival. And if you want to experience the optimal fun on Carnival, we recommend that you plan for the deck parties. Carnival usually holds a couple of different types of deck parties on most cruises. Our favorite is the 80s Rock and Glow party where the cruise director and their staff host an awesome evening. Usually starts around 10.30 p.m. or so. Usually it's out on an open pool deck and there's all kinds of fun dancing to different 80s music like Guns N' Roses, Cyndi Lauper, Michael Jackson, you know the thriller dance, everybody knows this one, right? So many great things, um, and so, it's such a good way to like let loose on your Carnival cruise. Now, experienced Carnival cruisers will also pack a few props, maybe some costumes and things like that. You can jump onto Amazon.com and find some cool ideas to add a little neon to your game, or you could dress like a rocker. We've even seen people dress like, is it Richard Simmons? That Richard Simmons, the workout guy? Go crazy with your outfit and have a blast. There's also another party called the Mega Deck Party, which is also known as White Night, where everybody dresses in white, and that's a ton of fun too. And on some cruises, there's even like silent discos. We're actually looking forward to doing a silent disco type of a thing on this cruise. We've never done one on Carnival. We've done it on other cruise lines, but never before on Carnival. So we're gonna give that a try, pop on those uh, headphones and see what that's like out on the open decks great deck parties. Let's talk a little bit more about nightlife because Carnival does nightlife so well. And our tips for you are if you're really interested in the nightlife, plan ahead, get out there and enjoy it. You have things like the comedy club that you can check out. You have things like, um, obviously you've got the casino, you've got nightclubs, stuff like that. But you also have fun events like dive-in movies where you're sitting out on the open pool deck and watching movies and better yet those production shows. The production shows on Carnival are absolutely fantastic. So let's move to our next location and we'll bring you some more tips. We are back in our stateroom with some more tips and money-saving tricks for you. One of those tips and money-saving tricks is actually kind of a stateroom organization thing, and that is to pack a USB charging hub on your Carnival Cruise. A lot of times what happens when we get on the ship and we get into our room is we realize we don't have enough plugs and USB outlets to get things plugged into. So these simple little devices are just so very easy to use. They don't take up a lot of space and you can charge everything from cell phones to cameras, whatever it is that you need to charge that way. It just really makes things a lot easier. And in our experience, folks, 
Carnival has actually been allowing them without any issues. Okay, another tip I have for you, if you are a little bit of an old school cruiser like myself, I'm an old school cruiser. I've been around for a while. I started cruising, gosh, when I graduated from high school back in like 1991, did I just age myself or what? But I gotta tell you, I really miss the paper the paper menus, the paper fun times. And I'm here to tell you that you can still ask for those things if you really miss that newsletter, holding a copy of it, highlighting it like we all used to do in the old days, right? You don't really wanna use the Hub app to look at all the activities for the day. Just go to the customer service desk and they'll give one to you. Now the same thing actually goes for those menus in the dining room. You don't necessarily have to use that QR code, folks. You can ask for a paper menu, it is still a thing. All right, speaking of food and beverages, it is actually still allowable to bring certain types of beverages on board a Carnival Cruise, and that can save you a lot of money. Now, you cannot bring on beer and liquor and things like that, but what you can do is bring the allowable amount of wine, champagne, and soda. Nothing in plastic bottles. Plastic bottles are a no-no on Carnival, and there are limits, so check on the Carnival Cruise Line beverage policy, which you can find on their website for a little bit more information and save yourself some money by bringing some wine, champagne, and maybe even soda with you. We love to eat. Our family loves good food. And I have to tell you that I think Carnival Cruise Line has some wonderful specialty dining. And I believe that it is worth the splurge. And my tip for you is to save a little money and give it a try. From the steakhouses on board, to Gigi Asian Kitchen, to the sushi and teppanyaki experiences that you can have on board, splurge a little bit, maybe even look into the chef's table. These experiences are absolutely amazing and we think you should give them a try. If you're looking for something though that is not an upcharge, but we think is really special and unique to Carnival, it is Sea Day Brunch. Sea Day Brunch is this awesome thing where they turn the dining room during breakfast and lunch hours into a place to go have brunch. You can get items that are from the breakfast menu, or you can get things that are more lunchy like burgers, but they really have an awesome selection of different foods from steak and eggs to huevos rancheros to burgers, spaghetti, salads, you name it. They're all really great and do not miss the French toast. The French toast is absolutely outstanding. Now, also held in the main dining room area, just like Sea Day Brunch, are our traditional dining times these days. You can do your time dining or anytime dining, or you can do traditional dining. But one thing that we suggest that you do is have fun in Carnival's main dining room. Usually they have a series of entertainment throughout the cruise. There's music playing. It's just a lot of fun. And we just recommend that you get into the dining room and remember what cruising is all about. It's all about having a little bit of fun and lively entertainment with your wait staff. It's so great. But I will tell you, on the last night of the cruise, they do play that sad goodbye song. And I just, it gets me choked up every time. So sometimes I try to avoid it because that one is not fun. So maybe skip the last day <laughs> if you get a little bit emotional. All right, let's talk about my favorite bar on Carnival Cruise Line. If you haven't tried the Alchemy Bar yet, you are in for a treat. We suggest that you, if your ship offers it, check out the Alchemy Bar for some cool concoctions like 40 is the New 20 or the Cucumber Sunrise, or better yet, let the alchemists kind of concoct something special for you. They also do have special events and discounts available for you that you do not want to miss. There's another great tip that we love to share with Carnival Cruisers, and that is that Blue Iguana Cantina, which is usually out on the pool deck, usually on Carnival Cruise ships, doesn't just serve burritos and tacos for lunch, but they also serve breakfast, you guys. If you haven't had huevos rancheros or a breakfast burrito at Blue Iguana Cantina, you are missing out. Head there for breakfast. Speaking of food, our last tip for you today is to know that there are actually quite a few free dining choices on Carnival that you may not know about. So for example, did you know that Gigi turns into a Mongolian wok and is free for lunch? Yes, it is true. And Cucina del Capitano offers a pasta bar during the lunch hours. Also, Guy's Pig and Anchor has free barbecue 
some days on a cruise. A good time to check that out would be embarkation and sea days. We hope that you have enjoyed all of these Carnival Cruise Line tips and money saving tricks. There is another type of video that we love to make to help people out, and that is a stateroom organization video where we talk about tips and tricks for keeping your cabin organized on a Carnival cruise. So we're gonna go ahead and link to that because I know that we only mentioned one of those. We would also love to invite you to check out our Carnival cruise vlogs where we take you along on our Carnival cruises and we have some great website articles too. So in the description of this video, we're gonna put a whole library of resources for you so that you can plan and get ready for the ultimate Carnival cruise. And you gotta go to cruisetipstv.com check out our website, search Carnival, get over to instagram.com forward slash cruise tips TV and follow us there as well. We have a couple of panorama highlights on there. You can go see all of our awesome experiences and don't forget to subscribe before you take off today. We appreciate you so much folks. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.